Okay, so this is going to be a core class, which is also going to be strengthening aspects of both the upper body and the lower body. Now, obviously, the upper body, particularly the shoulders, are built for mobility, but that causes problems. So what we have to do is we have to put strength into them shoulders to keep them healthy. Now, with the hips, they're built for strength, but the problems with that is that you need to put flexibility in them because they get too tight, so as. And that's what we're gonna try and bring into this class. But also, we're gonna work from our core, our center, because when we work from our center, we can bring back a sense of power and control into our lives. But because we're gonna connect with the core and the ground, there is gonna be a strong element of moving into these powerful legs. So I really want you to concentrate on that feeling, okay? So, let's start as we always do. I mean, obviously you can orientate ground and centre, okay? So knowing where you are in time and space, just look around the room and you can find five things that are the same shape or the same colour or the same light, or five things that capture your attention. Four things that you can hear. My voice, the birds, the clock ticking. Three things that you can feel. So feel your feet on the floor, your hips and your hands and your thighs. We're going to be working on the power in our legs. Lovely. Two things that you can smell. I can smell the fresh odour of the air outside. The soap on my hands. I think it's Crabtree and Evelyn. And then centre. So we come to our core and our centre. So I want you to focus on your belly breathing throughout this practice. Deep inhales and deep exhales. And at every point where we calm down a little bit and we slow down, I want you to reconnect with that breath. So place your hands on your belly. Okay, and then what is checking with that quality of your breathing? Where is it short, shallow, up here? Bring it down. Imagine that there's a belly balloon behind your belly button. Okay, so we're going to go for that deep abdominal breathing. But what I want you to remember is a trick to connect with your core power and your agency, okay? The space between your pelvis and your belly button, your lower abs, when you're doing your yoga poses, especially when you're doing warrior, I want you to tilt this up towards your head, lift it up towards your head so you're lengthening your lower back, okay? In yoga, we don't say tuck your tailbone in anymore and squeeze your glutes, it's not good, okay? We work with lifting the lower abs, Brilliant. So let's get down on the floor and check in and bring the spotlight of attention to our body. We talk about the cautious, the mind, the body. So let's lay down. So remember, when we do a little bit of a body scan, we're not trying to change or fix or judge anything. We're just looking for a curious um, exploration for whatever is going on in the body right here, right now. So. Imagine that you're in the scanner at the airport and it's going one of those handheld ones or the standing ones. And I want you to start to, first of all, close your eyes or soft gaze. And I want you to bring your attention right down into your body, all the way down and focus on the contact between your body and the floor right here, right now. And bring your awareness, your mind, right down to the bottom of your feet. Feel the contact between the soles of your feet with your knees bent on the floor. And then very, very slowly working your way up towards your head. I want you to notice areas of tension, discomfort, num numbness, even comfort, heat. So we're looking at every sensation going on. So you may feel your feet against the floor. There may be a tactile sensation of the clothes, maybe tingling. Whatever is happening right here, right now, look, looking for reasons why. Bringing the spotlight of attention to your physical states. And the really important thing is the body knows the score. What is, we trap our emotions in our body. This is the new theory in science, particularly, I mean, we've already known it in yoga, but Van der Kolk and Gavomete and Peter Levine, they all talk about somatic awareness. And then check in with your mind 
quality of your mind speak today? Negative, positive. Have you been thinking about the past? Have you been thinking too much about the future? Can you connect into this practice, into a present moment of attention by focusing on your grounding of your feet and your breath? And then connect with your heart space, your emotional feelings. What have you you've been feeling today without looking for reason, reasons why? Check with your emotional state. Label and name whatever is challenging you to bring yourself into that window of tolerance. Just notice, that's so important. Brilliant. And then let's set an intention for our practice. It's like a wish for your own well-being or anything that gets you through the roadblock of life. Action will always follow intention. It's the best way to get yourself into a positive frame of mind for your well-being. Do a short positive statement beginning with I am in the present tense. So whatever you've been feeling on an emotional mental level, you might want to flip that script. Remember, gratitude and thinking positive has a rewiring effect on the brain. Brilliant. So when you've come up with your intention, just give thanks and let go. Let's get into an active child's pose. So what do I mean by active child's pose? Because I've said before that your shoulders are built for mobility and not stability. And this is why a lot of people have sh shoulder problems. Okay, so what I mean by that is having your spine and big fingers. So whether you have your knees wide or knees to touch, and if this feels uncomfortable, blanket in between the hamstrings and the calves or underneath the knees. As you come into your child's pose, okay, you have these tented kind of fingers. So slide down and you're really not trying to drop your lower body onto the floor to touch. So keep it nice and active, but I want you to really try to keep your shoulder blades gliding down your back when you're practicing yoga. Think of your shoulders as one unit, but really extend and stretch, but don't collapse into it. Keep a sense of, you know, tone that you're holding yourself up into the shoulders. So with those spider pig fingers, you can drop your forehead onto the floor as long as you've got active arms, active shoulders, balancing on the tips of your fingers. Okay, and squeeze your shoulder blades together lightly, pulling your shoulder blades, let them glide down and fall down into the back as they're going towards your hips. And connect with your breath, nice deep inhales, nice deep exhales, making this the background to your practice. Okay, lovely. Okay, and now we're going to come into puppy pose. So drop your palms flat to the floor now. Lovely. And as we come into puppy pose, we're going to come up so that our hips are directly above our knees, kind of hip distance apart, like so. And then we're going to melt our heart towards the floor. So hips above knees and melt and stretch so you feel that stretch into the armpits okay you can have your forehead to the floor now if you want to really go for this active pose ten your fingers ten your fingers active shoulders drop your forehead to the floor pull your shoulder blades down your back ten your fingers okay low and make sure you're not wearing your shoulders earrings so you come into this active position with your heart melting towards the floor. And if that feels uncomfortable, just gently lower your palms down and your forearms and relax into this. This is a little bit of a deep back bend. Okay, nice. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come into, okay, we're going to come up into tabletop. So if your wrists feel tender, put something underneath the heel of the palm. Okay, knees underneath hips, so we're nicely stacked. Lovely. Now, this is a nice one to do if you've got shoulder problems because it really helps to protract the shoulder blades. So we're taking our we're taking our fingers towards our knees. Okay, we're very gently, very, very gently rocking from side to side. 
and then we're going to come into cat cow if that feels uncomfortable just have your fingers pierced facing forward we're going to do cat cow in this protracted position okay which is you know sometimes if you have a little bit of kyphosis it's kind of quite nice okay but it feels uncomfortable okay to put your fingers in the way so we're going to come into cat cow head up belly down on the inhale and then exhale really round and drop your head and look towards your knees so do that on your own time cow head up belly down and exhale Ooh. so we're going up and down like a bumpy cow remember don't collapse into your shoulders always remember that if you're collapsing into your shoulders you need to protect your shoulders by pushing a little bit into the floor and keeping that activeness within the shoulder unit lovely and then we're going to take our fingers out to the side with our heels of our palm facing in and we're just going to gently shift the weight from side to side so this is a little bit of yoga for the um, wrists today just gently shifting from side to side now what we're going to do is we're going to circle the rib cage and bend the elbows at the same time so circling the rib cage so inhale as your rib cage goes up and exhale as you rotate, rotate it down it's almost as if you're kind of hula hooping and bending your elbows to get right into that just really bend it get right into it and you can come down almost as if you're just gliding up and around so you have a nice big circle and then release and take your fingers forward if that feels as though you want to just take any stress out of the wrists interlace your fingers and give it a good circle okay because there's a lot going on there and then just very very gently pull your fingers back on the exhale as you are outstretch your arm like so just gently pull the fingers back on the exhale and then release and then the opposite gently pull the fingers back and then release and then just shake it out like that as if you're trying to shake off water lovely okay so if you need to put anything underneath the wrists okay so you remember to put this like so if that helps a little bit of a wedge is nice lovely so let's do a little bit of work here okay on the car as well okay so what we're going to do okay is we're going to come into a little bit of a balanced cat but what we're going to do is this so come down very very slowly so you're going to come down so that your elbow your left elbow is on the floor and your forearms on the floor like this so you're in half dolphin arm this arm is straight and this forearms on the floor okay and then you're going to rotate rotate your chest to the side like so so that your hips are stacked push into this right hand to do that okay and then very very slowly using your core okay on the exhale bring your elbow so you need to watch your elbow and then straighten on the inhale exhale knee to elbow and straighten really pull that core in nice and pull it in on the exhale and then inhale strong core and straighten on the inhale exhale in and inhale and then release Oof, that's strong in the car let's push ourselves back a little bit into charles and just release that now Ooh. 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 so that was my left arm down but i'll do it on the opposite side so you can see me like this okay so so my left arm was down my right arm's down this time okay push into this hand this leg's here if you want to pull this foot back and have a little bit of a kickstand push into this hand as you rotate your hips okay so you take your leg out really push that leg out press into the heel and spread your toes okay and then exhale knee to elbow inhale strong core pull that belly button in towards the spine exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale works the hip flexors as well in that outer hip so working that glute medius exhale inhale oh and then just take it back into child 
We are working the car today. And then as you come into Charles Bush, just check in now a little bit with how you're feeling. Any sensations in the breath? Just come back to the body and the contact between your body and the floor. And just see if you can come back to us. Nice, steady, smooth breath. Lovely. So what we're going to do now then, okay, is we're going to come into a little bit of a dolphin plank, okay? But we're going to do that and we're going to come into Sphinx first. So Sphinx again. So we're going to come down onto the floor, okay? Feet into the corners of, well, not quite, but feet hip distance apart. And we're get and measure your elbows so they're exactly the forearm width. Spread your fingers wide, jazz hands. And the trick with this is to not crush or the lower lumbar spine is press your lower hips into the floor, really press that pubic bone into the floor, and press your forearms into the floor and lift and press your chest through your arms and really lift your ears away from your shoulders. Okay, nice. So this is what we're just holding the sphinx, really pressing the hips into the floor, keeping very active in the forearms, keeping very active, chin parallel to the wall, pushing the heart through the chest. I'm reaching for a biscuit, a little bit like a turtle. Yes, small biscuits. Exactly. Kathy Bate was saying, none to the ground there. They're having a great time. I've got all the biscuits they want. I wonder what they want underneath. Okay, now we're going to come to forearm plank. So you've either got a choice to have your knees up or down. Interlace your fingers like so, bring your feet close together, okay, and you're gonna tuck your toes under. Now, you're gonna have to really pull with your core. So as you tuck your toes under, lift your hips, and then really pull your toes a little bit more forward. Make sure your shoulders are over your elbows, and press your heels back, okay? Lift your knees up towards the ceiling. Chest, no sagging here. Pull your core in, okay, tailbone going towards the heels. You can have the knees down or you can have the plank like so. Lovely, it's up to you. And then very, very slowly drop your knees and then we're going to push back on the exhale to child's pose. So I just want you to reconnect with sensation, reconnect with your breath, feel contact between your body and the floor. Really notice. Come back to that breath, keep it nice and smooth and steady. Lovely. Okay, so we're now going to come on our back for a little bit of psoas release. Okay, so come onto your back. A nice little bit of psoas release. This is where you keep your fight or flight tension. Feet at the edges of the mat, knees bent. And we're looking for cactus arms where your elbows are in a nice degree, your arms are in a nice degree position with your elbows in line with your shoulders. So very, 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 very slowly drop your knees over to the left on the exhale. Keep your shoulder blades glued to the floor. Inhale, lift. Keep it nice and slow and focus on that stretch. So as you drop your knees, say for example, to the left, you feel that deep stretch into that psoas muscle, which is very, very long and it's a hip flexor. I'm just giving it a nice little bit of release. So what we're really doing with the shoulders is we're really working on stability, but here we're working on mobility because our hips get tight and cranky. They do a lot of work, they hold us up all day. And then our shoulders, they get weak. And that's why we have so many problems with our shoulders because they're built for mobility and they really need some strength put in there to keep them stable because it's such a complex joint. And really go with that breath, it's lovely. And just feel that sensation, fantastic. Now, we're gonna come with this IT band stretch. So with this IT band stretch, I'm just gonna demonstrate. So I'm gonna bend my right leg, okay? And I'm gonna straighten my left leg up towards the ceiling, lower back into the floor, okay? This is an IT band stretch, you're gonna keep, you're gonna take your left arm out and your right arm out, but you're going to try and glue your shoulders to the floor. Now, very, very slowly, keep that foot flex we always do in yoga because it activates the thigh muscle and keeps the kneecap aligned. And very, very slowly, you're going to rotate, okay, over to the side. Oof. So 
This is the IT, this is the outer hip stretch. Doesn't matter if you can't get that leg to the floor, okay, if you can. Don't worry, if the, you can put your hand on there to give it an X, put your hand on top of the leg to give it weight. Okay, so you're going to feel that stretch right into the TFL IT band here. Okay, a lot of people have IT band TFL syndrome. So you can feel that deep stretch in that outer hip. Again, your hips are built for stability, but they really need some flexibility thrown in. Lovely. Okay, really focus on that sensation. What are you feeling? Ooh. And then you can just bend that leg and then come back to the inhale and then release and then squeeze your knees in towards the chest on the exhale and just focus on that sensation in the back and the floor come back to your breath just notice how you feel and i'm going to do that the opposite side arms into a t position bend your left leg straighten out your right leg flex that foot and very gently roll onto your left hip making sure that you, your shoulder blades don't come off and come into that it band stretch okay and then you can place your left hand on your right leg and you feel the outer hip stretch here don't worry if you can't straighten that leg it's a bit of a hard one this and just focus on the sensation just notice how you are feeling with this twist as well and then bend that top leg and then come back to center on the inhale and exhale squeeze your knees in towards the chest so let's come into our core wakey uppy core is a very good way to fire up and warm our body so what we're going to do is quite simply is you're going to bend one leg so it's a 90 degree angle foot flexed okay and with the other leg at 45 degrees 90 45 okay so all you're going to do okay is you're going to be working opposite arm and leg okay like so so the trick here is to pull your core in so that your lower back is touching the floor okay and you've got a nice strong core so very very slowly you're going to alternate very slowly like a dead bug bending one leg and straightening the other as you take the opposite arm to the straight leg which is not happening seriously <laughs> opposite arm to the straight leg with me like a dead bug dance okay off you go work that core okay nice and slow move with the breath inhale and exhale just move nice and slow feel that core pull your core in pull your belly button in keep these feet flexed nice and slow if you feel as though you can do it with both legs okay do that but it's, this is just fine i've got clunky here because i can feel my sores clicking nice and slow feel that core Oof, this is quite a strong one isn't it okay nice and strong with your dead bug opposite arm and leg nice and strong if you want to do this one okay so if you want to do it if you want to do it like this arm up and then straighten, hollow body, pull the lower back into the floor. Otherwise, stay there. So arms up, knees 90 degrees, then you go like that and like that, okay? So you'll go inhale to lengthen, exhale to bring everything up. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, bring everything up. You don't have to lift your head off the floor. Keep that lower back touching the floor. Keep that core pulled in. Feel your centre, your sense of power and agency. And then when you feel ready, pull your knees into your chest and just rock nicely from side to side. Just to stretch out the core, because we've done quite a lot of work there. You can get a block if you want, you don't have to use a block. We're just going to come into a bridge just to stretch out the core nicely. Okay, just to, because it's done a lot of hard work. Put a block between your thighs. See so if you can tickle your heels, feet parallel like train tracks. Okay, try to put the weight into the outer arms. Push your hands down, push your feet down, squeeze the block, roll your thighs in towards the floor, and then see if you can roll onto the outside edges and grab hold of the edges of your yoga mat and push your hips high as you squeeze the block and feel that stretch. So we're just stretching the front 
abdomen there after doing all that work. And then very slowly, one very, very time from the neck all the way down towards the hips, just drop, squeeze the knees in towards the chest on the exhale and just rock a little bit from side to side. So well done everybody, you've worked really hard there. Okay. Whew. So, a little bit of rocking up everybody, so we're going to rock up. Rock up back and forwards, and just see if you can massage that spine a little bit. Backwards and forwards. forward fold hand, feet parallel like train tracks, hip distance apart, belly on thighs, okay, and just put your thumbs into your hip crease, push your hip crease up and back, drop the head heavy, tailbone up to the ceiling, you can grab opposite elbow, let your arms hang, or you can grab, interlace your fingers, straighten your arms and tail up, oh gosh, and give that really big stretch in this mudra, Otherwise, just let your arms dangle. Whew. Make sure your knees are hip distance as well as your ankle bones, so they're not not need. Whew. Oh, nice. So we're going to come into a low lunge. Okay, so low lunge. Drop that left knee. Oh, make sure that right knee is above the right ankle. Use your hand to push yourself up. Lovely. So we're going to come into a little bit of a twist. But we're going to really push into I'm going to put this underneath my knee actually because my knee's feeling a bit tender. We're going to work into the hip flexors, these fight or flight stress muscles, and really work and think about the power and control that's going on here. So place your hand inside of your right foot so you're pushing your hip points towards the floor so you're going to feel a stretch in your front thigh muscle in, in your front thigh muscles. Okay, and then nice. Take your arm, right arm back, okay? We're just gonna flow a little bit. Take your arm back as you twist towards this knee. Put your hand on this knee and just exhale, twist towards that bent knee, taking the arm back. And then very slowly, we're just gonna move with some mobility with the shoulder, okay? So, inhale, take your arm forward, okay? Exhale, push the left hand down as you take the right hand back. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, push left hand. Twist, look behind you, look at the fingers. Inhale. Exhale, twist and push. Inhale, you're gonna feel that stretch in the thigh, the inner thigh muscle, because we're working with mobility with the hips today, stability with the shoulders. Lovely. Now we're gonna come into a high lunge. So to come into a high lunge, Place your hands on your knees, okay, tuck your back toes in, okay, lovely, and press into that back leg, whoop, so you press your heel back, back leg straight, this uh, knee, well, I like to dip your back knee slightly down so your tailbone goes towards the floor, okay, so this knee is slightly bent, that knee is above the ankle, okay, and we're going to come, we're going to be in a high lunge, shoulders over hips, remember, nice, strong core and centre, active, Push down to that front leg as you just sink that front knee over that ankle and take the arms up. Lovely. Now, I'm going to come into a warrior position. Warrior position. So as I come into warrior position, I'm going to drop that left heel, drop it down so that my back foot is parallel with the short side of the mat. And then I am going to come into warrior. So as you come into warrior, hug muscle to bone, sink that front knee over the ankle, Okay, you're shifting towards the long side of your mat. Make sure that knee is going out towards the pinky side. Strong foot, press down into that blade edge. Draw everything to the midline. You're looking at the side. You're coming into your warrior. Okay, remember what we said about your core is your power and your agency. Tilt your lower, tilt your lower abs up towards your head. Now, relax your shoulders. Don't wear them earrings okay look at your middle finger nice and strong feel the power in your legs rooted and rising lifting 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 lovely so I'm going to swap this round so you can see what I'm doing so as I'm in this war pose we're going to come into warrior arms 
Okay, so with warrior arms, it's up to you how you do this. You turn towards the side, take your left underneath your right, so your elbows are stacked on top of each other with backs of hands together. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my left hand so that my palms face each other in a twist. Okay, and then on the inhale, lift your elbows up towards the ceiling. Try to remember to keep your core strong. Tuck in your lower ribs, okay, so they're not popping out. If that feels uncomfortable, go for the playground snog. Fingers around the shoulder blades with elbows lifted. Lovely. Eagle arms. Nice. So when you're in eagle arms, okay, good. Strong, powered. Really squeeze that black glute, okay. Now stay here, okay, or if you feel this is too much, you can relax your arms. Come into a mudra, take your arms out to the side and point your thumbs towards the floor. Interlace your fingers behind your heart back, okay. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, open up your collarbones, chest lifted. Nice back bend. Now stay here or come into Humble Warrior. Check that knee is not rolling in, that right knee is not rolling in. Come into Humble Warrior, you lift your chest and very slowly you drop yourself inside of that right knee. Humble, 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 humble. Dipping your forehead towards the floor as you take your interlaced fingers up towards the ceiling. Check that knee is not rolling out, keep it nice and tightly in. Okay, very slowly, use your core strength, inhale, lift all of it, press down to that front foot, press, 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 press. Whew. And powerful, isn't it? Very strong indeed. We're going to come into a wide leg forward fold. So, have your feet parallel in this wide position. Whew. That's a, such a super strong position, isn't it? So we're going to come into a wide leg fold. <sighs> now... With this wild leg fold, like with all yoga poses, where you protect your hamstrings, you pull your thighs up towards your hips, pulling your kneecaps up. Place your hands on your hip creases, okay? Try not to push your hips forward too much all the time. Doing that all the time is quite lordotic. Keep your natural hip crease there. Okay, nice big lengthening. It's up to you what you want to do with this, but I'm going to take, my, uh, take your hands and then lift and then fold, squeeze your thigh muscles up towards your hips and come down with a flat back from your hip crease. Okay, we're going to go for, make sure that your toes are pigeon toed coming in and your heels going slightly out, pull these in. Imagine you're trying to squeeze both of your thighs together, lovely. I'm just going to take, if you can get your fingertips to the floor, you can keep your hands here, but if you want to come into a wide, walk your arms out really, really wide. Walk your arms out really, really wide towards the right so that you feel with your Spider-Man fingers so you can feel a nice stretch all the way in this, down this left side of the body. And keep squeezing those thigh muscles. Keep pulling them up and keep squeezing them, the legs as if you squeeze them towards each other. Then over to the left, feel the stretch. Keep squeezing the muscles, lovely. Come back to the center, hips. And really lift and lengthen. Use your core strength. Lift, 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 lift. Oh, beautiful. Well done. We'll come to Samas T. Equal standing posture. Front side of the mat. And let's just check in. Let's check in with our breath. So just close your eyes. Place one hand on that and one in your belly. Just close your eyes. And just check in with your mental and your physical states. So notice how you feel. Notice any pulsation. Any deep energy going around the body. Just notice how you feel emotionally, physically, mentally. Just check in and see if you can come back to that nice, deep, smooth abdominal breathing again. So it's nice and rhythmical and it's calming down because you've worked really hard. Well done. Okay, so take your hips, feet, hip bits to power. Take your thumbs onto your hip crease. Bend your knees. Make sure your feet and your knees are hip distance apart. Bend your knees all the way down. I like to do it a bit like this. I really like to stick my butt out. Oh yeah, stick my butt out. Really stick your butt out as you drop your belly towards your thighs. And tip using your thumb so that you're pushing your hip crease and your thighs up and back and grab opposite elbow. If you want to come into that mudra again or let your arms just 
hang. Maybe your wrists feel a bit sore and you just want to let your palms face up. Or you can take your arms wide, thumbs facing down, interlace your fingers, squeeze your shoulder blades together and lift and lengthen, take your arms overhead. Coming into that deep mudra stretch. Really working into the shoulders. We're working on the shoulders. Okay, so now we're going to take our right leg back. Wahey! Because we're going to come into that low lunge on the opposite side. Oh, sorry about that, that was my kneecap. Cranky. I'm just going to put my knee underneath here because it's a bit cranky. It's been a bit cranky this week. So we're coming into this low lunge on the opposite side. Again, working into the hip flexors. Whew. That's quite strong, this class, isn't it? I've been wearing myself out, I must say. So, make sure that knee's over the ankle. Use your hand, okay? Make sure your hip points are square to the front of the mat. And we're just taking the right hand opposite to the bent knee, taking that onto the floor. And we're just moving into that stretch. So we're pushing, just sort of, I don't know, pushing our hips forward and down. So we're moving into the hip flexor stretch. You'll really, really feel that. Really feel that stretch there. Okay, so put your hand on your left knee and on the exhale, twisting above your waist, just twist towards that bent knee. Nice. Taking your left arm back. Okay, let's do a little bit of scrubbing. Okay, so press, press the floor down as you take your arm back and then inhale, bring your hand forward. Move into that shoulder. Exhale, hand back. Inhale forward, really don't collapse into that shoulder, keep pressing into the floor. Just flow, don't let your knee drop out to the side, keep it nicely tucked in. Just flow and move. Oh, and release. Oh, I know what you mean, it's a tough one, isn't it? So oh, I'm just going to make my hands into fists. So if you ever feel tender at any point when you're using, place your hands on the floor, fists are nice. And that just feels more comfortable. So we're going to come into that high lunge, remember? Okay. Make sure that knee is above the ankle. Tuck that back toe under. Oh, okay. Use your hands to push yourself up. Okay. Drop that back knee so it's bent a little bit. Whoops. Let me just move that. Bend that knee a little bit so that your tailbone goes towards the floor. That knee is directly over the ankle. Your chest is lifted. Collarbone's open. Always remember to tuck those lower ribs in and push your chest back. When you pop everything forward and through, you're being lordotic. Okay, good postural alignment. Not too rigid like that, but then again, not too floppy forward. In between, lovely. So. Take your arms up, keeping your hip points square to the front. And then we're going to come into warrior two. So you're dropping that back right heel. So this foot, the edge of the foot is in line with the short edge of the mat. Heel to arch alignment. So that arch of that foot is in line with that front heel. So remember when you're doing your warrior position, okay? You're hugging muscle to bone as if you're pulling towards your midline. Sink front knee over the ankle. Squeeze that back glute, really press down into both feet. You're really trying to keep active, strong, powerful and grounded. The chest is going towards the sat long side of the mat. Remember, you're tilting your lower ab up towards your head. All bones open, shoulder blades bound down the back. Relaxed upper body. It's very powerful here. Okay, and arms wide. Good. Lovely. So, coming into our eagle arms, this time right elbow underneath the left elbow directly. Backs of hands together. Take your right hand, palm, so it's facing your front palm, so you're in this twisty pose. Or come into the snog. Okay, so if you're coming into this position, inhale, lift the elbows away from the chest. Into this eagle arm warrior two. Whew, lovely. Now stay here, or you can take your arms out wide, thumbs pointing down, interlace your fingers, soft bend in the elbows, but squeezing your shoulder blades together. You're coming into Humble Warrior. Really press down into those legs, 
Exhale, fold, taking your hands up towards the ceiling. You're bringing yourself your left shoulder inside of your left knee. You can also do a humble warrior by just grabbing your forearms. This is quite a strong pose. You're going to really feel it in that left glute. It's a deep stretch into the shoulders as well. Use all of your core strength on the inhale to lift and lengthen. Press your feet down. Press, 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 press your feet down and come all the way up. And then let's come all the way towards our wide-legged forward fold. So slightly pigeon toed again, heels out again, squeezing these thigh muscles, making them really strong, super strong. Press into the big toes as well. Give you that little bit of lift into the old pelvic floor. Way -hey. Squeeze, lift and lengthen. And then fold from your hip crease to the flat back. And again, if you want to come into that stretch, come all the way over. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Get your Spider-Man fingers and give yourself a nice deep stretch into the shoulders. And then come all the way over. You don't have to do this. You could be all right just here. Stretchy, stretchy. And then all the way to the center, hands on hips, nice, use your core strength, lift and lengthen. And then some T front of the mat. So let's check in with how we're feeling again. So I'm going to place my hand, left hand on chest, belly on my heart, belly, hand on belly. And let's just notice how we're feeling again. So the really important that we try to stabilize our breath. See if we can come back to that deep abdominal breathing again through the nose and through that nose. Just feel all sensations, feel your feet on the floor, feel the power, the energy pulsating in this body with this very strong and powerful flow. Just notice how you're feeling on an emotional level and the mental level. Oh. And just feel nice and calm. Nice. So, just to come down onto the floor, we're going to come into a little bit. You've got two options here, okay? Come into a Malasana squat. Legs wide, toes pointing out, heels pointing in. So, a Malasana squat, you make sure that your tailbone, you're not sticking your bum out, your tailbone's going down towards the floor, okay? If this one's too hard, then you can come down with a little bit of a balance posture. So, balance, come onto your tiptoes. Very slowly, bend your knees until you come all the way down. Not good for the knees, neither is this one. So be careful if you've got bad knees, if you're going to do that one and come into Malasana squat. Okay, so you very, very slowly bend your knees, your tailbone goes down to the floor. And this is your Malasana squat. Okay, which is a deep hip opener. Okay, and when you're ready, however you get down on the floor, it's up to you. We're just going to come into a little bit of a hip opening position. Just let me pull my toe out. Oh, that's better. Sorry, I have to keep cracking it and pulling it out. No cartilage in the thing. It's been very painful lately. My toe. Whew. So, on our backs, we're just going to come into a half happy baby. Half happy baby. So, exhale bringing the left knee towards your left armpit, like so. So your thigh is really tucking into the side of your chest. You can have this knee bent or straight, whatever feels comfortable for you. So when we're coming into half happy baby, it's up to you. You can place your hands just behind your knee, making sure that this heel and this leg is straight going up towards the ceiling, or you can take a hand outside of the left foot. So this is your half happy baby really pulling that knee in towards the side of the chest and towards the armpit. So this is a deep hip stretch. And just breathe into that space. And then bending this right knee, place the left ankle on top of the right knee like so. Okay. We're going to come into figure of eight, pigeon. So place your hands around either side of the bottom thigh or the bottom leg underneath flex your feet and then don't keep your back of your neck flat to the floor and your tailbone where you bring in this 
top shin towards your chest. Okay, so you can place your hands around the thigh or on the shin, flexing. So remember, it's always good to work with strength and stability with the shoulders and flexibility and stretching with the hips. Crazy. <sighs> I've had one of those wonderful days where I've been reading anatomy to you. I've been learning all about trauma and COVID-19. Three hour webinar, I didn't move. And then what we're going to do is drop that foot with the leg on top of it still. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to, the foot that's on the floor, this foot that's on the floor, take it over, it's on the right side of the mat, take it over to the left side of the mat, take the foot over to the opposite side. So you're coming into a hip stretch like this. Okay. So this is like a fallen double pigeon. I think this one, uh, flex your feet, it's called the Hadahanasana. <sighs> Some geezer who killed a lot of people in Mahabharata. There's a lot of violence in uh, Mahabharata. And just relax here, just soften into the body and just drop into the body. And then. Bring that bottom leg back up, cross the left leg over the bent right leg, fold in the best possible taste, and then drop both knees over to the right, keeping your shoulder blades flat to the floor. I'm placing my right hand just very gently on my left knee for a little bit of guidance. And then if it feels comfortable, look at your hand and the opposite hand. And then inhale to centre, then opposite side. So squeeze your right leg. Okay, so I'm bringing this knee towards my armpit on the exhale. Okay, I'm placing my hand just behind, just there on the hamstring behind the kneecap. Okay, and this is going, shin's going up towards the ceiling. You can keep your hands here as you pull everything in, or you can place your hand outside, okay, of the foot. Pulling the knee in, happy baby. Half happy baby. This knee can be bent or straight, whatever feels comfortable for you. <sighs> what are you having for tea, folks? Let me know. Winners' dinners. I'm going to try and stop being silly. Sometimes I can be too silly. Okay, let's come into pigeon. Right ankle, left knee. Knee goes away from you. Either place your hand either side of your left thigh or as you pull it in on the exhale with both your, shin, both your feet flexed, hands on your shin. Make sure that your tailbone, and you're not coming up to meet it, your tailbone and your back of your neck is flat to the floor. It's all done in the best possible taste. Okay, so then what we're going to do now is we're going to drop this bent knee like so. Yeah. And then this bend, the foot of the bent knee underneath is going to go over to the right side and drop your knees. So it's like a kind of, that's it. Sorry about that ring. Bring them back out till I'm off. <laughs> I'll edit it out. Okay, so re bend that leg, cross your right over your left, all done in the best possible taste, shoulder blades flat to the floor, elbows. Oh, just come into that nice stretch, twist it, nice twist. And then come back.
back to centre and then get rid of your shavasana. So whether your knees are bent or whether you like to come into a bound angle pose with your soles of your feet together, knees out to the side, bolster underneath your knees, lay it down, eye mask on, blanket, do whatever feels nice for you. Eyes closed, soft gaze, or if you want to lay in the front, that feels nice. I'm going to guide you through this guided relaxation. So I'll be sitting closer to the camera, just so I can hold the space. Okay, so you just spend some time shuffling around. And remember, it's so important that you say to yourself, am I comfortable? So that you can rest in stillness and calmness. To allow the self to soften. So we're going to scan the body once again with awareness, being curious, not trying to change or fix anything. So just breathe into the feet and the ankles and notice any sensations here. And the next exhale, let go. Breathe into the calves and the shins. the next exhale just notice sensations as you move and breathe into the hips and the belly release and let go there and then focus and notice the front and back side of the torso and sense and feel the hands And bring your awareness to your neck, your throat and your head. And did you notice and find an area that felt at ease or relaxed? Or neutral or numb when you scanned your body? It could be the tip of your nose. Or the fingers and toes. Breathe deeply into this area of ease or neutrality. See if you can notice without words the qualities or the sensations in this area. Be open, be curious to the sensations here. Allow this area of neutrality or positivity to grow and expand with each inhale, like the fanning of the embers or a flame. Do you notice a sense of warmth or joy? See if you can imagine it spreading and filling the container of your body. And as you visualise it expanding with each inhale, if you become distracted by thoughts or sound, try to bring your attention back to this awareness of sensation and a breath. Keep inviting yourself every time you get distracted to stay longer with the sensation every time.
and slowly as it expands into the body and fills the container of your skin. See if you can notice a change, a shift, a quality. Does the body soften and become heavy? Notice your breath more. Is there a greater feeling of relaxation as you experience this right here, right now? What thoughts and emotions are registered in your body? your body could speak right now, what would it say? And just rest in stillness and open awareness when you feel that you've expanded this sense to the edges and outline of your body. Just let go of all focus. Just become aware of everything drifting in and out of your conscious awareness. Your emotions, your mind and your body and sounds and sensations, tactile, slow, without attaching yourself and leading yourself into a narrative. Just allow things to come and go open, spacious awareness, totally relaxed in the present moment, existing right here, right now. slowly invite you to come out of this practice. You can come back to this body scan and return to it any time you need it. Take your time to come round, to stretch, to wiggle, to move. I hope you've enjoyed today's quite strong practice. It's very empowering. It helps you to feel strong and ready to face anything. And with that core-centred awareness, sense of agency, and security. Namaste.